Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to the channel and today we're going to do something a little bit different. Now, just a tad, but typically about this time of the year, I try to compile a list of best games for the Nintendo Switch and usually that's a top 25. However, I, I kind of ran into a problem this year because the Nintendo Switch library has gotten pretty insane by this point. So I actually had to expand this year, meaning for the first time ever on this channel, I'm going to do a top 30 best list. And, and really, even that wasn't really quite enough. So I'm actually not going to focus on indie games for this video. Games like Ori and the Blind Forest, Hollow Knight, Hades, and Bug Fables will not be on this list, even though all of those games are absolutely amazing. And I do consider them to be among the very best. But I do have a separate list for top 25 indies on the Switch. So do go check that video out as well. That way, technically, technically, we're actually going to go over 55 games in totality across the two videos. Again, the Switch library is pretty insane by this point, but I will drop a link to that video in the comments below. With that said though, obviously there's a lot to go over here, so I'll, I'll try to get through this as quick as possible, but without further ado, let's just go take a look at the top 30 best games available for the Nintendo Switch. And to start off this list, I have Kirby in the Forgotten Land, which is Kirby's first outing as a 3D platformer. And I'm very happy to say that the two blends perfectly together. Dare I say, it might even be among the best entries for the franchise ever made. It is that good. Kirby, of course, is able to inhale his enemies and absorb their powers, and combining that with just wonderful but not overly difficult level design and well-hidden collectibles, it's an absolute pleasure to play through from beginning to end for the entire family. It's even got local cooperative gameplay as a bit of a bonus here. Next up here, I have Bravely Default 2, which is a brilliant turn-based JRPG. This game is heavily inspired by classic Final Fantasy games, and well, actually, it was originally developed as a Final Fantasy game before taking on its own name. But where this game truly shines is in its combat and job system. It might very well be one of the most in-depth systems I've seen in this genre, just period, that really pushes players to experiment in order to overcome the many challenging battles ahead. The way it works, though, is that you can pick choose and even combine jobs for different abilities and then in battle you can either default to store attacks or brave to attack in quick succession there's just so much strategy involved here though so if you really want to dive into a turn-based game and test your skills look no further than bravely default 2. Now here I have Mario plus Rabbids Sparks of Hope. This is definitely a strange combination on paper. You have Mario mixed in with the wacky but humorous Rabbids in a tactical RPG. Yeah, it sounds a little weird, but it's actually a ton of fun, and surprisingly, it also has some depth to it. You do have more of this free-form movement system where each character will need to work together with things like Team Jump to fast-track their way to hidden and covered enemies across the level, and there's plenty of customization by combining different sparks together for various abilities. This is not just some simple weird spinoff to Mario, though, but rather, I'd say it's really among the best Mario spinoffs ever made. It's actually very disappointing to me that this next series here has been overlooked now twice, being The World Ends With You, and then its sequel, Neo, The World Ends With You. These are very unique action JRPGs that just bleed atmosphere with their stylized art style. The stories, the characters, and the world, though, are what really stands out in these games. In each game, you find yourself in a parallel world where you have to play the Reaper's game. If you win the game, you'll then be able to return home safe and sound. But if you lose, then you and your team will die instead. It's an enticing story from beginning to end with an amazing, just an absolutely amazing cast of characters. Now, I will say I do like Neo The World Ends With You a little bit more, but the stories do connect together, so I do recommend playing both. Now, if you're looking for more of a party style of game to play at home with friends or family, or online if you choose to do so, Mario Party Superstars is the way to go. More or less, it's a virtual board game where the player that ends the game with the most stars wins. But how you actually get the stars? That's where things get interesting. Each board has its own set of rules with plenty of interactive elements that can change the tide of the game at any given moment. At the end of each round though, you also get to play a fun and easy to understand mini game to earn coins which then can be used for items and give yourself an advantage. You can buy stars as long as you actually reach its destination before the opposing players, or you can even steal a star. Just kind of prepare to lose a few friendships if you do so. 
Now, for you old school JRPG fans out there that loves that timeless pixel art, here I have Live Alive HD, which is a remake of a game that never actually hit the West until recently. It's got that beautiful, just absolutely beautiful 2D HD art style, though, that pops on a Switch. And this game is quite unique in how it's actually set up. You play as various characters, all with their own personal stories set in different eras. And with each timeline, they also play vastly different from one another. In one era, you might play as a stealth-based ninja, while in another, you play as a cowboy in the wild, wild west. Now, the stories do intertwine in an interesting way as well, so this one is highly, highly recommended. Next up here is actually one of my own personal favorites, the Danganronpa Trilogy. Now, it is important to understand, though, that these are visual novel type of games, first and foremost, so they might not necessarily be for everybody, but I mean, if you're looking for a good story, then look no further than Danganronpa. They are dark and twisted, as you basically play as a student that wakes up in an unknown facility, locked away from the rest of the world. In order to escape, though, you must murder one of the other students in the facility, but the catch here is that you also have to get away with it, because after the case, there's actually an investigation. If the murder is caught, they are then executed. It is an absolutely gripping story as you watch friend after friend betray one another. Now, Nintendo has always, just always been known for their creativity, and Pikmin, or in this case, Pikmin 3, is one of those games that showcases this in every possible way. There's just not many games out there that plays like this, where you have these little minions follow you around on an alien planet, and then you have to solve various goals and puzzles in a specific amount of time, or else your little Pikmin partners will die come nighttime. See, it's all about management, as you multitask by ordering your Pikmin to complete various goals. Even with the timer, though, I I'd still say that this is is a very chill and unique experience. It might not necessarily be as popular as some of Nintendo's other franchises, but definitely do not sleep on Pikmin 3. It's almost kind of hard to believe that Crash Bandicoot is now actually available on Nintendo consoles. I mean, if you grew up in the 90s, you, you kind of probably know what I'm talking about. You, you, you might remember Crash as one of Nintendo's biggest rivals. But now, here we are, and not only can you play the entire remade original trilogy on the Switch, which is better than ever with the Crash Insane trilogy, but you can also play Crash Bandicoot 4. Now, all four of these games, though, I highly consider as some of the best 3D platformers of all time easily, and they're also just kind of their own thing. They don't really play like your typical 3D platformers, and they're also highly challenging. These are not easy games by any stretch of the means, which, in my opinion, is great. I personally like a challenge myself, and if you're that way as well, then Crash Bandicoot 1 through 4 are must plays for fans of the genre. So, what happens when you combine Ghostbusters with the Mario IP? Well, you get Luigi's Mansion 3. In this game, you play as the scaredy cat brother in a spooky and, quite frankly, elaborate hotel. I mean, who, who knew you could find complete deserts in a hotel, but that there is the type of creativity that makes this game so fun. There's a lot of variety here as you try to find Luigi's friends who've been kidnapped by ghosts. This means you'll need to solve puzzles, suck up ghosts with your vacuum, and then also take on different boss encounters. This is also surprisingly a very good looking game graphically that I would consider to be one of the Switch's visual showcases. So over the years, I mean, we've gotten a lot of 2D platformers, but there are a special few that really stands out. Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze being one said game, and I'd say that's really for a few different reasons. One of the main reasons, though, is the sense of reward, as Tropical Freeze can be, I mean, it can be a real challenge, but thanks to its strong mechanics and level design, it always pushes you forward to overcome its many obstacles. There's also plenty of variety, whether that be with different characters or even animal buddies that will completely change how the game is played. It even has some of the better or boss encounters for the genre, so if you're looking for a good 2D platformer, Tropical Freeze is the one you need to play. Alright, so technically, this next one here is an independent game, but sadly, I, I forgot to put this one on my indie video, which I, I was very upset about that because Omori is such an amazing experience that will catch you completely off guard. What originally looks like a sweet and charming experience quickly turns into one of the more serious and dark games that I've ever played. It is a turn-based RPG on the surface, and actually a good one at that, but it's the story and its characters that will make your jaw drop. By the end of this game, I I'm telling you, I was blown away, and I was just so engrossed by its characters. Like, they honestly, they feel real because of how well-written they are, and the story is just wow. 
I mean, I don't want to give any spoilers away for this one. It's kind of best to go into this one blind. But do just kind of understand that it is a horror game that deals with very serious subjects, including depression and suicide. Now, in my honest opinion, Portal 1 and 2 are some of the best games that's ever released, hands down. And even though these games have been out for a very long time, they are still just as good today as what they were when they first released. And better yet, you can actually now play both of these games on a handheld console like the Nintendo Switch with the Companion Cube Collection. If you don't quite know what these games are though, they are very unique puzzle games that gives you a portal gun which can shoot on specific surfaces, one blue, the other orange. You can then use physics, platforming, and your lovely Companion Cubes to solve its mind-bending puzzles. The sequel then ramps things up even further by giving you new substances to add an extra layer to its already masterful puzzle design. Then there's the story, which I mean is highly, highly humorous and interesting all the way through. Seriously, if you haven't played these games already, what are you doing? Go pick up the Companion Cube collection right now. Now, one genre that's kind of had a bit of a resurgence as of recent are tactical RPGs, and while the Switch exclusively has some of the better games in this genre, such as Fire Emblem and then Triangle Strategy. Now, Fire Emblem Three Houses is a much grander game in scope, as it mixes a social management sim in, where you play as a professor teaching students, and then you can kind of bond with them and find ways to best organize your time. It also has three different classes that you can lead, all of which have different stories, so there's a lot of replayability here. Then as for Triangle Strategy, this is more of an old school tactical RPG sporting that again, beautiful 2D HDR style. These, these games really do pop on the Switch. But either way though, these are both top tier tactical games with good stories to boot. Now one thing that you're probably kind of noticing by this point is that the Nintendo Switch, it's kind of king when it comes to RPGs. This console is a powerhouse when it comes to this genre, and that includes Dragon Quest XI. In many ways, this game is an old school turn-based RPG that came straight out of the 90s, but with more modernized visuals and world. And I do say that in the best way possible here. There's a reason that the 90s are often viewed as the golden age of JRPGs, and well, Dragon Quest XI fits right in with some of the best games Games from that era. In Dragon Quest XI though, you will go on a grand journey with a party of memorable characters, you have an emotionally gripping story, the art style is timeless, and of course it has strong turn-based combat as well. If you do miss those 90s JRPGs though, then Dragon Quest XI is a good game to jump into. Now the Nintendo Switch might not necessarily be known for shooters per se, but quietly, Nintendo does actually have one of the better competitive shooters on the market, being Splatoon 3. It's also very possibly the most unique, as it centers around squidlings that uses paint-based weapons, where they can paint the level for tactical advantages and splat their enemies. They can swim in their own color paint, which not only allows them to move quicker, but they can also surprise unexpected victims. There's also various modes that changes how the game is played, but one thing is pretty consistent here. Splatoon 3? It is very, very fun, and the cool thing about this game is that it's not just a good competitive shooter, but it also has a fun single player campaign as well, and a good cooperative mode where you can fight off waves and waves of enemies. Next up here I have Astral Chain, a hack and slash game that's just a little bit different. You actually control two characters in this game, the protagonist, and then an alien-like creature attached to a chain. You can then swap this creature in and out, which not only changes up its combat, but it's also necessary to solve various puzzles throughout its world. And I have to say, its world is actually quite mesmerizing with its neon color design. This is actually probably one of the better visual showcases for the Nintendo Switch, but you might possibly think that playing as two characters could be maybe overly complex or cumbersome, but that's not really the case in this game. It actually feels very good, and more importantly, it's insanely, insanely fun. I even think that it has an interesting story, though. I will say I, I do kind of wish that the silent protagonist was voiced instead. So Animal Crossing New Horizons just kind of blew up this generation, as it's quickly become a top seller on the Nintendo Switch, and really? That's for good reason. I mean, just look at how adorable this game is. But but no, really, it is a very enjoyable game. It's charming, and, and it's also very addictive. On the surface, this is a social simulation game where you play as a character who moved to a deserted island, and then you need to develop and customize said island. You can plant trees, catch bugs, go fishing, among several, several other things. And while that might sound mundane on the surface, don't be surprised when you log in daily as you progress and create your own little piece of paradise. 
Now, Nier Automata is one of the better Switch ports to date. It was a surprise Switch release, but it actually runs quite well, and, and I mean from top to bottom, this game is nothing less than a masterpiece. Its world is atmospheric, its music is some of the best that I've heard in gaming, just period, its story is absolutely fascinating, and then it's also extremely fun. It is an action RPG with hack and slash style gameplay, and then there's also some shoot 'em up sections as well, but as you dive further and further into its story, you just start to unfold these different layers and you start to understand just how truly special this game is. Just as a bit of a forewarning though, once you reach the end credits, keep playing. It's not over there. Reach the end credits at least three times, but I'm telling you, if you haven't played this game already, do yourself a favor and go check this one out. Plus, now you can actually have this as a handheld game, which is a nice little bonus here. I've always held a special place in my heart for the top-down Zelda games, and while we haven't gotten a completely new installment for quite a while, we did get a remake of the beloved Link's Awakening. Now this is actually kind of a weird and strange one, but I'd also say that it's, it's kind of special for those reasons as well. You quickly become mesmerized by its odd world, its music, and, it, and then its story that you slowly uncover. There's a mystery here that really sinks its claws into you and then it just kind of sticks with you in ways I, I don't think many games can pull off. It's also smartly designed. It doesn't necessarily have a huge world, but it's dense with various secrets and some very, very well thought out puzzles and dungeons. If anything, I think this is one of the most memorable Zelda experiences. All right, so now we're moving into the top 10 best games. And I mean, in my opinion, we've already talked about some pretty stellar games up to this point, but the show must continue on with Monster Hunter Rise. Now the Monster Hunter series has risen in popularity here in recent years, in large part because of Monster Hunter World. Unfortunately though, the Switch was kind of missing out here, or at least until Capcom decided to make Monster Hunter Rise with the Switch specifically in mind. And I have to say, Capcom, they absolutely knocked it out of the park here. This is a full-fledged Monster Hunter experience that you can play on the go, and thanks to its art design, it, it really stands out on both the TV and in handheld mode. Its mechanics is also an improvement compared to its previous entries by adding more verticality this time around and more mobility by allowing you to ride around on your dog companion as you hunt down and slay monsters. Now, some games just know how to quite simply be fun games, and that's exactly how I describe the Bayonetta trilogy. You can now finally play all three of these games after the third has finally released on the Switch, and they are some of the most masterful hack and slash games ever made. They're fast, fluid, and frantic, but also precise and technical. They're really top of their class in terms of combat, and they rank right up there with games like God of War and Devil May Cry. But I also think that they're a bit underappreciated in terms of story. You often hear that their stories are absurd, and okay, yes, they kind of are, but they're also entertaining, and, and I don't think that that should be forgotten. I will say this though, there is a big jump in terms of quality from Bayonetta 1 to Bayonetta 2. So if you do start out with that first game, don't stop there because these games only get better. Then from Bayonetta 2 to Bayonetta 3, it adds even more combat options by including monsters that you can control in the midst of battle. Now I am still playing through the third game myself, but what I can tell you here is that the Bayonetta series ranks 10 out of 10 for entertainment and fun. Pokemon as a series has had such a profound impact on my life. From the very first moment that I played Pokemon Blue as a kid back in the 90s, I was absolutely absorbed into its world. I was obsessed with it. And now here I am as an adult all of these years later, and they are still some of my favorite games. And luckily, the Nintendo Switch has a lot, and I mean a lot, of Pokemon games to choose from, such as Sword and Shield, you have Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, and even new Pokemon Snap. There's also Scarlet and Violet coming here soon. I have high hopes for those. All of these games, though, are great in their own way, which I recommend, but the one that really caught me by surprise is Pokemon Legends Arceus. I actually went to this game cautiously optimistic because there, there are some pretty big changes here, but I, I left with it being possibly my favorite single player experience in the franchise. The story is actually interesting, being an origin story where Pokemon are feared rather than friends. You can also now catch Pokemon simply by sneaking up on them and throwing Pokeballs at them. And then it's also challenging which was very surprising that made the gameplay even more fun. This is something that I've really wanted to see in a series for a long time, and the trainer battles in this game, they, they can really test if you're truly the best trainer that there ever was. I only wish that there was more trainer battles in this game, 
But I will say Legends Arceus is a game I'd easily recommend, and not just for Pokemon fans either. Legends Arceus really is a great entry point for any gamer. So after years and years of Sega and Atlas being big doofuses, they finally grew a brain and are releasing Persona on the Nintendo Switch. This includes Persona 5 Royal, which you can actually pick up as of the making of this video, and then also soon Persona 3 and Persona 4 Golden. Now technically those two aren't out as of this video, but I have played all three of these games and they are as good as advertised. These are among the very best turn-based JRPGs to ever exist. Now, now, I will say even though Persona 5 Royal is the most popular, which that's fine because it's it's great, but Persona 4 Golden is actually my own personal favorite. The characters mesh so well together in this game that really leans itself into its mysterious overall plot. The way these games work though is that you play as your everyday student and it's more or less a social sim where you manage your time, but then there's these parallel worlds where it becomes more of a dungeon crawler where you fight demons and uncover the mysterious happenings that intersects with the human world. Their story Stories, though, their characters, atmosphere, and combat are all just so masterfully done. These are must-play turn-based JRPGs. All right, so for this next one here, I went ahead and decided to pretty much combine all of the Mario games. That way, we didn't have to have a Mario game for like every other entry. But this does include Mario Odyssey, which sits among the very best collect-a-thon platformers ever. There's a ton of collectibles in this game combined with great and creative level design as Mario can throw his cap on various objects and creatures and use their powers. Then there's Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury, which is an interesting mix of a 3D Mario game and a 2D level design. This one is quite unique unique for the Mario series and definitely worth a try, especially with its bonus content being Bowser's Fury that is set more in a 3D world. And then you also have the 2D Mario games being Super Mario Maker 2, which essentially lets you create your own fun, and then you have Super Mario Bros. U, which plays like the old classics. Plus, that one is a blast to play cooperatively. All of these games, though, are great in their own way, but if I were to recommend just one, I'd have to go with Super Mario Odyssey. Again, I do believe that that one does sit at the very top in terms of collect-a-thon 3D platformers. It is a staple for the genre. All right, so here we are in the final stretch, the top five, and that starts with the Xenoblade series. Now, Nintendo might be best known for games like Zelda, Mario, and Metroid, but Xenoblade in terms of quality, is among their best work, and that goes for the entire series. Xenoblade 1, Xenoblade 2, and its expansion Golden Torna, and the newest entry, Xenoblade 3. They all have great stories, and they all have great characters. Now, if you're new to the series, though, it doesn't really matter which one you play first. They each have their own standalone story, and really, you can't really go wrong with any of these games. They are action RPGs, but they're very unique in how they play. Your moves and abilities operate on cooldowns, and you need to work with your team to pull off various types of combos. Now, I will say, though, that I think Xenoblade 3 is a big step up in terms of combat and gameplay, but again, you really can't go wrong with any of these games. They're, they're all, quite frankly, amazing games. Now, after a very, very long wait, Nintendo finally brought back the 2D Metroid series with Metroid Dread, and just wow, was the wait well worth it. You once again play as Samus, who loses all of her abilities on an alien world, big surprise, right? But she then has to traverse its dangerous and elaborate planet by upgrading her abilities. It's as atmospheric as you'd expect from the franchise, but this time around, its world is quite massive with several zones and biomes to explore. It also adds a little bit of horror this time around as these robotic-like creatures hunt and track you down. So you're going to need to use Samus's newfound abilities to escape their clutches as you navigate its mysterious world. Where I think this game really separates itself from past entries, though, is with Samus's mobility. She's much more nimble and agile in this game, making Metroid smoother than ever before. Now, there are certain games out there that just pretty much everybody enjoys, which really is a true testament to how good they actually are. And the Mario Kart series is a prime example of just that. And well, there's actually a very real debate that Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is the best entry yet. It's a chaotically fun game as you might expect from the series with all of its over the top weapons that can really change the tide of the race. It's easy to pick up and play, but also has a high skill ceiling. And then where I think this game truly shines is in its creative level design. 
Nintendo, I mean, they are truly in their bag when it comes to Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. I think the anti-gravity edition is genius here, but I mean, it goes so far beyond that. It really just seems like every single level in this game was just so brilliantly put together. And I think it's one of the big reasons that Mario Kart just kind of separates itself from other kart racers out there and just remains at the very top. When you start to think about it, and I mean, truly think about it, you, you kind of start to realize it is absolutely crazy what Nintendo has done with Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. In many ways, it's almost a tribute to gaming history with some of the most beloved and well-known gaming icons all brought together in a single game where they can fight together in this fighting slash brawling type of game. I mean, you can play as Cloud from Final Fantasy, you can play as Sora from Kingdom Hearts, Red from Pokemon, Ryu from Street Fighter, or even Banjo-Kazooie. And that's just scratching the surface here. It is actually flat out amazing what Nintendo's pulled off here, but even more so that each character was truly developed with care. You can tell that they're passionate in making these characters really come to life in a genuine way. Better yet though, Smash Bros. Ultimate is also incredibly fun. On one side, it's easy to pick up and play for pretty much everybody, but it also has a very high skill ceiling for pro play. And there's a lot of depth here if you truly, truly want to invest the time. And at the number one spot, I mean, you, you had to know it was going to happen. It's got to be the 3D Zelda games. Now here, though, I do have two different games being Zelda Breath of the Wild and then also Skyward Sword HD. I'm actually really in the belief that there's no best Zelda game. Every fan kind of has their own favorite because they're really all just that good. But in this case, both of these games are quite a bit different. So you have Zelda Breath of the Wild, which is more of this open world style of game that emphasizes adventure, experimentation, and then exploration. Whereas Skyward Sword, this is more of a traditional Zelda experience that focuses on dungeons, puzzles, and then boss encounters. Now, Breath of the Wild is more popular. I mean, this is the game that really catapulted this series into just like this new height of popularity, but I don't think that that really equates to better. I myself, I personally prefer the classic Zelda experience as an example, so I actually do like Skyward Sword more here. Plus, I think that it has one of the better stories in the Zelda franchise, but I mean, as I just said a moment ago, Breath of the Wild is still an absolutely amazing game, and if you prefer that open world experience, did you might like that one more. Either which way you go though, both of these games are flat out amazing and that's why I have them as the number one best games on the Switch. I, I do recommend them both. Anyways though, that's it for this video. I, I mean, I know it was a little bit of a longer than usual episode. We did do a top 30 this time, but hopefully you enjoyed the video. And if you did, make sure to hit that bell notification and subscribe button below for more content just like this. Also, if you'd like to support the channel through Patreon, thank you for making this content possible. Peace out.